He's gonna trust me to throw one in the oven here. Just set it right there. Welcome set it back right. to the farm. Today we're changing something down here at the Ben site. Looks like the truck's already there, so let's head on down to see what we got going on. Last year we put up this large 27,000 bushel grain bin and moved our old wet bin to our new dry bin position. And our grain bins aren't perfectly airtight. There is a bit of silicone bead in between each individual sheet on a grain bin, which means there's two places for air to escape outside of a grain bin. One of which is the roof of the bin and the other is down here where there's imperfections between the grain bin and the concrete. And the reason I'm so concerned about air leaving the bin is because when we harvest corn out of the field, it comes out at the air temperature between 70 and 80 degrees. And from there, it gets filled inside our bins. And for me to store my grain over winter inside one of our grain bins, that means I need to cool it down from that 80 degree temperature, somewhere down to 30 degree temperature. And the way I do that is with these big centrifugal fans that are connected to the bins. The fans on the outside of the bin then force air through the holes in the floor, which then gets fed up through the grain in the bin, ultimately lowering the moisture content and temperature of the grain filled inside of it. To prevent the wind current from the fan blowing underneath that little gap we have in the bin, that's why today we're putting on some sealer here to ultimately seal up the bin and get a higher rate of productivity from our fans on our bin. And helping me do this project, I have my good buddy Ray here. You can see he's putting down some hot tar. Not really gonna be able to talk for the time being since he's gotta put it down while it's hot. Ain't it hot, Ray? Oh yeah. Yeah? And it's more, uh, it spans with your bin. It don't get hard and crack. And see, once I've done the first layer, see how it's already, oh, that's already That's already warm? That's already dry. Oh, it's already dried. Yeah, it's not on your hand? Yeah. And it does span with your bin when you let your uh, uh, corn out and in, and it really does uh, uh, spans like a rubber band. How many coats are you putting on? That's uh, this is the second coat. Second coat already? Some spots will put three coats. Yeah. Well, it helps it, with the fans, right? That's what I'm talking oh, about. Oh, and it's air sealing. Yeah, fan. The air. It keeps all your airflow going up in your system that goes up up in the bins where That's you need what it I'm to flow. About. We got especially these big bins. You saw on that other side, we got some of those quarter inch, half inch gaps already. Yep. Yeah, because today we're doing our two big bins here, and then are you gonna get to the other ones today? You think? Oh or? yeah, we we'll yeah. stay at it. Okay. We'll stay at it. We can get it done and get out of your hair pretty quick and. Yeah. Hopefully later on you had some more put up and we can get some more. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully the price corn goes up, we put up some more bins. Exactly. We had them out here, was that three, two years ago when you did them other ones? About three years ago, yep. yep. And now we had to cut all that foam off of that messy foam. Yeah. It was just had a bunch of rats, all eggs all into them, messy and running tunnels all through them. So this stuff the rats do, and mice do not like. Right. So here you can really see the difference. We got our two big bins. This is the one. Rage's card over here. You can see a lot of that starting to already dry. And then the one that he's gonna get started on next is our other big bin. Here you can see there's no tar there. There's probably a quarter inch gap there between the bottom of the bin and the concrete. So he'll get that nice and sealed up for us for this bin and our other two. This what? See how it's in there? And it's nothing at it. It's just a. Uh, can I put one in? Huh? Can I put Sure, put one in. Just watch it, don't splash. Okay. That stuff's hot, but you can set them on them other blocks. He's gonna trust me to throw one in the oven here. Just set it right there, set it right on them other blocks. This way or this splash. way? Any way, it don't matter. It all gotta cook. Like I say, there, there's nothing at it. Them blocks goes right in there, and that's what we put on. Put them back up. While Ray and his guy are working down there at the bin site, I came into our big machine shed here because I need to get our seed tender cleaned out. We still have corn in it. It's over in that shed connected to this one. So I'm gonna back the 560 out here, throw a ball on the hitch, and we'll hook up to the seed tender. driven the 560 since we got it back from the farm shop after they replaced the tie rods on the front axle and the yoke inside the PTO. So hopefully it gives me good luck. you 
ridiculously, we made it halfway through the season without the 560, but now that it's back, we're definitely gonna put it to use and leave it on the seat tender. So I grabbed the two and five sixteenths ball hitch that we're gonna put on it so we can hook it up. You're now about to see why I miss this tractor so much and prefer to use it over a truck. Did you catch it? I can hydraulically raise the hitch on the tractor. That way I don't have to screw around with this cranky old jack ever again. It's been two weeks since we put corn in the ground. So I don't even remember how much seed is left in the tender. So we'll kick the scale on, which will tell us how many pounds are left inside here. It says negative 40, so maybe it is empty. The only way to know for sure now is to either try running it, or climb up the ladder and check from the top. Looks like there's just a few kernels of corn left at the bottom on this side and maybe two or three over here. To open those out, I gotta open the bottom hatch here on the conveyor. We'll get the shop vac, suck those out since we don't want corn seed get mixed in when we start filling the seed tender with soybeans. There's a good amount of corn still down here in the bottom of the hopper. So I cleaned out the vacuum cleaner since seed corn's expensive. We'll run it in here then dump it back in the planter. Now since the seed tender is empty, I would like to go ahead and put soybean seed in it. That way it's ready to go. But because it keeps raining almost every other day, I have no idea which field we're gonna start planting at first, which means I have no idea which variety I need to load into the seed tender. So I'll park that back away in the shed. That's going to stay parked there now until we get some drier weather, which it looks like is on the forecast for the next couple of days. The next thing I need to get ready is this little dolly cart right here. This is supposed to be made to sit over top of our conveyor here, which we'll use to fill the seed tender. And I need to put an 80-20 applicator on here to apply our seed graphite telk mix to all the soybeans that we're going to be loading up. It's just a lot easier to load them here in the yard with the applicator that we got made. But I just got to connect it here to this bracket and it should work. In this shed we're in now, we don't keep any wrenches. So I went to our machine shed right next to it. And you know, you always grab a couple options because you're never sure what size it is. Looks like this one's a 9 16 This is the old bracket that broke off. I ordered a new bracket. Just got to slap that one on here. And then I should probably hook it up to some power and double check that it's going to work. There we go, it looks level from the eye, so I'm gonna say it's level enough. I'm gonna wheel this up to the front of the shed. We got a 120 volt plug on it. Wanna make sure the metering device is gonna work on here before the day comes when we need it. Now I should just need to flip this switch and I can hear the metering gates running inside there. That's what makes sure there's no large clumps of telk inside of our pail here. And then there's a little slide gate here that we can adjust the flow rate on of the telk that's going to dribble out of this tube to ultimately go up our conveyor, fill our seed tender for the planter to plant in the field. Now that that project is done, I'm taking the pickup out 
as well as my seed finder to the first field we finished planting at a little over two weeks ago. And I'm hoping to see some corn sticking out of the ground. Surprisingly, there's not a lot of huge puddles out here in the field. And I'm able to just walk around in my boots and not pick up hardly any mud, really. But there is just the one low spot here of the field, which looks like we'll end up replanting since it's pretty well drowned it out. It's been three weeks now since we planted this field. So I'm gonna see if I can find a couple kernels of corn down here in our muddy soil to show you guys a little bit of growth that we've had since then. Here's the first one I found. You can see that one's starting to imbibe water and starting to grow. And then this one back here already has a nice shoot on him. What we really need is for that big shining ball up there in the sky to shine down a little bit more and really warm up the soil temperature down here that's really gonna help our corn emerge out of the soil. And it looks like that's what we're gonna get in the coming days. And I am honestly shocked how dry it is out here. It rained another inch and a tenth last night. And I'm out here walking around in the field. The only downfall of this that it's dry and we're not able to plant is that means more than likely tomorrow we'll start picking some rocks out here. I'm gonna keep checking a couple other fields, see how things are coming along. It really varies field to field since not all of our fields are right next to each other. A lot of them always have different amounts of precipitation, just varying on the rain event. So we're gonna check those out and then I'll meet you guys back up at the yard and we'll see if Ray's done or how he's coming along. Ray and his guy are making one final go around on covering the spots that are low on the rubber coating. And the reason I show what Ray and his business, Nationwide Farm Pride, which you can find them on Facebook, we're doing today at our farm, was not to be a sponsor or an ad to you guys. It was for me to try to educate and show what we're doing to try to improve the efficiency of the fans. Because reality is, a couple years ago, before I came back to the farm, I really had no idea why we were rubber sealing the outside of our bins. So I thought it'd be a way to educate and show everyone else what we're doing here on my farm. And with that, that's gonna do it from High Tech Farmer. See you guys in the next one.